Hello, I'm Mike Stacy, and I want to share with you some simple exercises that will only improve your horsemanship skills. You can contact us by email at MikeStacyHorsemanship at yahoo.com. Also, check us out on Facebook at Mike Stacy Horsemanship. You can log on to our new website at www.mike-stacy.com with all our new schedule of events. I want to personally thank each and every one of you for your continued support. Please ride safe. We'll see you out on the trail. Hello, I'm Mike Stacy. I'm going to be demonstrating here with me the 10 basic lunging exercises we need to have on our horses for, to start out our groundwork series with. So I'm going to be demonstrating with her first and then I'm going to bring two other horses through that aren't quite where she's at to show you the steps to get here. So first of all, if I'm going to go ahead and lunge my horse. I'm going to go ahead and cheek her and I'm going to disengage the hip. Getting the hip moving. When I know I can disengage your hip as nicely as this, I'm just going to release and start to lunge. That way she's bent around me and I can't get hurt. It's impossible pretty much to get kicked like this, so I want to start my horses out like that. Real nice, in hand, quietly, at a trot. And now that I've started to disengage her hip, I should be able to, with all that forward motion, being able to stop her hip. Okay. So I will do both sides like that. Okay, first of all, I want to just take her and I'll cheek her. Again on this side. To disengage the hip, get her moving nicely and quietly underneath herself. I'm looking for that right hind leg to step over in front of the left. Okay, when she's stepping over real nice like that, I'm just going to release and push her out. Lunging her around me, keeping her bent around me. And being able to stop. Stop the hind end, all the forward motion. When I can do that step right there, that's my first step, okay? Just being able to cheek her and disengage her hip. Okay, now when I've got that first exercise down, I just want to be able to now from here, direct her shoulder and drive her hip. Now if you do step one, this step two right here is a lot easier to achieve. So that's why I wanted to demonstrate step one. This is step two. Being able to just direct her shoulder, drive her hip, and stop all the forward motion from here. Now I should be able to step over here, direct her shoulder that way, and drive her hip. And like I said, at all times I should be able to step over and disengage the hip. Now if you've worked exercise one real well, 
This exercise two will be easy, okay? So, now let's go to exercise three. When I can direct a shoulder driver hip like that, now I want to be able to direct a shoulder driver hip through forward motion. Okay, now if you've done step one, step two, the step three should be very easy to achieve. And I will demonstrate with some other horses that don't do it quite as well how to really get this. But here we go, I got forward motion going, I should be able to switch hands, direct a shoulder, drive her hip this way without stopping her. Now you have to have that exercise one and two down first before you can direct a shoulder and drive her hip this way. Okay, so I really, and I just keep everything at a trot at first. Eventually we should be able to walk, trot, and canter through all these exercises. But right now I'm just directing her shoulder, driving her hip, and always being able to stop her on her hip, okay? And like I said, those are, that's a, a step three. Directing her shoulder, driving her hip, while in forward motion, being able to direct her shoulder and drive her hip. Now I'll keep her bent around me a little bit here too. I want to watch that nose, keep her rib cage bent a little bit. Keep her moving, keep her moving. Now like I say, when you start getting this exercise established real well, I should be able to canter through this. Now your horses have to be pretty broke to be able to lope them in tight little circles like this and also be able to direct the shoulder and drive the hip with that forward motion. But like I say, you've got to go through your lunging exercises first and really establish them before you start trying to lope your horse off like this. Because it takes a lot to be able to lope your horse in tight circles and be able to direct that shoulder and drive that hip. And they need to be pretty comfortable with their loping off in the correct lead. So I've really established this with this horse a lot. Where I can lope her in this tight circle in the correct lead, change directions, and her lope off in the correct lead. Whoa all the time being able to stop that hip, all that forward motion. Okay, now that I've showed you some of those lunging exercises there, remember we've still got her in hand. I have, I have not pitched my horse loose yet. So an, another exercise of right about this stage when I started getting her feet moving, soft, supple, responsive, respectful, really focusing in on the five body parts of my horse. My head and neck and my pole, my shoulder, my rib cage, and my hip. All those these lunging exercises I'm showing you demonstrating are really focusing on that and really getting their feet moving. So I'm, I'm really focusing on their feet but focusing on those five body parts also. So right about this stage, this next exercise I like to do is just start getting my horse to back up, okay? Now, I'm gonna try to back her up here through my feet, okay? So watch what I'm gonna do here. I'm just going to take her and I'm just going to back her, back her, back her, back her. I want to get them feet moving. I want to back them. I like to try to take them and see if I can't back a little bit of a circle here. So I'll back her and I'll back her, back her. Now I want to push the hip over a little bit. Back her and back her. Just really want to get them feet moving real nice. Okay? I'll move her hip over. See, I can get that hip so I can push her hip over and still move her. Still back her, back her, back her. Disengaging the hip. Moving her, backing her, backing her, backing her, backing her. Getting them feet really moving. If you notice I'm not pulling on the lead rope, I'm getting them feet moving, getting them feet moving. But anytime I can take the hip, push the hip over, push the hip over, and back, back, back. Each foot, back, back, back. Okay, that's really important to really start getting this right here on the ground. Whether you're starting a colt or you're fixing a problem horse, just working on some, some exercises with your own horse, I really want them backing. So I really want them just to be able to back with their feet real soft, okay? And like I say, I'll put as much pressure as I have to on my horses, just as much. I'll only give them, them what they give me. So I want them really backing nicely, pushing the hip over, moving her, moving her back, 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 okay? So that's where I put about time I want to start backing my horses and really getting them backing softly. The more you can back your horse, the more broke they'll become. Okay, uh, I, so I really do a lot of that on the ground and in the saddle.
Okay, this is Rooster I wanted to demonstrate on him. This is a BLM Mustang. Okay, uh, he came to me with some issues, some problems. The lady uh, adopted him from BLM and uh, originally started uh, riding him, got him broke and put him on trail. And he said she's had a lot of problems with him. He wants to bolt and buck and stuff like that. Okay, so what I want to demonstrate with you is some of these 10 lunging exercises. I've been able to really get move him along just with some groundwork, okay? And uh, that's the most important. That's why I, I'm, I'm demonstrating this whole video for you guys. Is it's all about some lunging exercises, to, and it works on every horse. That's why I brought this Mustang in to show you, okay? So, because he wouldn't lunge, she didn't do any of the lunging exercises with this horse or anything. She just climbed on him and started trying to ride him. And later on, the issue started arising. He started bucking, he started running off with her, and stuff like that. So, here we go. I'm going to start him on step one, exercise one. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna have my rope ready so I can lunge him, but I'm gonna cheek him at the same time, bending him around me, disengaging the hip. Just disengaging the hip on step one, okay? I wanna be able to disengage his hip real nice like he is, okay? Real nice, I'll really push that foot over and stop, okay? So now I'll go to the other side. And remember this guy wouldn't bend, he wouldn't do anything, so this is about a, a week or two along. Here we go, I'll push it, disengage his hip over here. And this guy wanted to kick you. He had a problem, the farrier couldn't handle his feet, anything like that, there we go. I wanna, just did that, that's step one. When the farrier couldn't handle his feet or anything, I know why, because you couldn't touch him, he wouldn't move him, all he wanted to do is get bracy and kick you. So step one right there, disengaging his hip, really starts teaching him how to move his foot away from me, quietly. Now I can kind of touch his feet and everything, and he doesn't want to kick me, so I can reach back here and touch his feet now, stuff like that, in between them, and he's just more comfortable with it, okay? So, step two. I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take, take step one and turn it into step two. Dis disengage his hip by cheeking him, getting him moving around me, and then letting go of the, of the halter and lunging him. Okay, it keeps him away from me so he can't kick me because remember this Mustang here wanted to kick you. Okay, and if I tried to lunge him just normally, he wanted to run at me, over the top of me, and uh, also try to kick me. So that right there really gets him, I can push him away from me like that. I bend him around me and push him away. Okay, I'll demonstrate that again. And now look, I can stop him on the hip because I've been disengaging his hip on step one. So. Here we go again, I'm gonna demonstrate that again. See how he wants to move away from me and everything? He's really shy. This just gets him broke, okay. Step one, I'm cheeking, I've got my rope ready to pitch him away from the halter. Step, and I can, I can, haul, I can cheek him like this. This is step one. See how I got that rope? Cheeking him. Step one, disengage his hip. Now I've taken step two. As I got step one here, disengage his hip. Step two, pitch him loose, lunging him. Okay, lunging him forward. See, I bent him around me and lunged him. And like I say, with step two, I should be able to also step and stop him on the hip. Okay, stop him on the hip. Okay, so I'll go to step three. Step three is now that I've got him moving around me and he's kind of soft, I can take him and now just point and I can direct that shoulder a little bit and drive his hip. Now remember, he wouldn't do that. I had to start cheeking this horse to get that. So that's why I'm showing you and demonstrating this. If you got a problem horse, a wild Mustang, anything like that, of course, I'm gonna, if it was a wild Mustang, I'd have to go to get him halter broke first. Okay, once you get him halter broke, these are the steps you need to go through. So there are steps with each and every horse. You know, I'm just showing you a problem Mustang here that's still kind of getting broke, in my opinion. He's, he doesn't know anything. But now that I've got him moving forward like that, directing the shoulder, driving the hip, watch, I can still stop him on the hip. Okay, I can direct his shoulder and drive his hip. And this was really tough for this guy to get. All he wanted to kind of do was run at you and kick you. Okay, it's not because he was mean, he just was nervous and he didn't know any better. Kind of spoiled, kind of spooky. And here we go, I'll stop him on the hip. Okay, so we did exercise one, exercise two, exercise three, exercise four here is directing his shoulder, driving his hip while in forward motion. So I want to now be able to take him, direct his shoulder and drive his hip while in forward motion without having to stop him first, okay? So I'm gonna switch hands here and see if I can't just step in front of his drive line and send him. Okay, see how bracy he is right there? Here's what I'm gonna do to, to, to fix that. 
All I'm going to do is I'm going to use the fence to stop my forward motion. So here I'm going to go to the fence. I'm going to keep lunging him, keep lunging him, keep lunging him. Start stopping over here. Stop in the forward motion. If I can, if he keeps on moving, that's okay. I'm going to try it again. Come over here, start stopping the forward motion. Direct the shoulder and drive his hip there. Now he can go through me. Now see, I wants to bend the right way from me, keep the hip away from me so I don't get kicked. It's all because I did step one and step two. Step three. And this is step four. Here we go again, I'll do the other side. I'm gonna lunge him, I'm gonna lunge him towards the fence, lunge him towards the fence, stopping him, stopping his forward motion, directing him, trying to get him bent around me, away from me, and all the way around me there, okay? See, I'm, that's how I'm gonna start establishing that, being able to direct that shoulder and drive the hip through forward motion. That's a tough one to do, but if you just follow your steps, you can start doing that. And I'm showing you with a problem horse how to achieve that. Now when you start thinking you can get that, let's see if I can't just do it out here. We'll right from the fence, I'll step over. Okay, good, there. See, I just showed him right there on video how to do that. Here we go again, direct the shoulder, drive the hip with forward motion, forward motion, trying to get him to bend around me so he doesn't kick me. Moving him forward. Okay, and like I say, I'll keep using that fence as much as I got to. I might use that fence one more time here again. I'm just directing forward, getting closer to him, getting closer to him. So I can stop with the forward motion right there, use the fence, and go. Now see, I wants to kick, I'm just gonna keep going. But see, he's not kicking at me so much, he's keeping that hip away from me. See, I can step in and push the hip away from me. Very, very important, okay? So I've showed you exercise one, two, exercise three, and four. Exercise five, this is gonna be really tough for him. He's sticky, I wanna be able to start getting his feet moving. It's backwards up, backing up. See how sticky he is right there? Good, I'll start, just do a few steps at a time. I'll move him forward. I wanna be able to stop his feet. If I can, I'll go to his hip, stop his feet. See, I wanna control that hip. If you notice, a lot of the engine exercises is really about the hip. So here we go, I'm gonna back him up, back him up. Back him up, just a couple steps. Okay, good. Now if I run out of fence, watch, I can come over here and move that hip a little bit. There, right there, to open up the space so I can back him again. So I can back him again, using my hand to kind of block him here. In case he wants to bite me, try to paw me, or run over me. I've got a hand, I've got a shield here. So I'll move him up again and show you real quick for backing up. I'll use my hand for a shield. Kind of using my hand right there to block him a little bit. Backing up, backing up, backing up. Now if he does that, I'm just gonna push his hip again, backing him up. Backing him up, backing him up. One couple of steps, good. Now I'll slot that really slow. Okay, especially with a horse like this, a Mustang like this, it kind of wants to retaliate a little bit. I'll start slow, that's pretty good for backing him up. I want to rub it away though a little bit. So I'll stand here and just rub it away, let him know that, hey, it's nothing personal. So I'll just rub it away. And that's exercise five. I really start wanting to get him backing, backing in circles like that on the ground. Um, and like I said, the more you can back your horse, the more broke they become. It's a big problem with him, he doesn't want to back up. His feet are real sticky. So the lunging exercises really gets his feet moving, really gets him transitioning nicely under saddle. What you do on the ground really reflects in the saddle. So I'm doing everything I can here on the ground to get him soft, supple, responsive, and respectful so he's that much more easier to ride. My next exercise I'm gonna to go to is just getting him to join at the hip here. So now that I can direct her shoulder and drive her hip, I can do that through forward motion. I want to direct her shoulder, drive her hip. Just getting her lunging nicely around me again. Now, I want to be able to just, with my body language, be able to walk towards her and disengage her hip and have her have, be able to hook on and follow me. So here we go. I'm just going to walk through her hip and get her to stop and follow me. Noticing that I haven't had to pull on her head at all, okay? So she's right there, I wanna be able to turn around, drive her some more. Just making them really soft and supple in hand. This is the first steps to really getting the horse real soft. Watch again, I'll push to the hip. Okay, see how her hip disengages right there? I never had to pull on her. Now as I'm showing you this on hand, right here in hand, we're also gonna do these lunges, lunging exercises off hand too. So if you want them really nicely hooked onto you, where you can have this kind of connection with them, you've got to start them in hand first. So I will demonstrate with her here later, offhand, what we can do with her. 
But right now, like I say, pushing that, walking in the hip, being able to push the hip is very important. And I'll do both sides. Watch how I'll take her, still moving, and I can push her hip this way, her shoulder and drive her. And still walking her hip, pushing her off, getting her to hook on. Always just moving, see how she's trying to stay out of my space, all of that. Again, I walk like I'm walking towards the gate, being able to push her hip out of my space, really keeping her soft, really keeping her where she's hooked onto me and paying attention. So it's nice to be able to take this exercise like this, being able to lunge her and just walking into her hip. Walking away. See how soft she is right there? That's what I want to look for in my horses. Real soft. So when I got that established, when joined at the hip exercise, I want to now start taking my horse with my bubble here, my space, and I want to be able to see if I can't just start walking with her everywhere. From one end of the round pen to the other. Keeping her moving around me, just keeping her floating around me, respecting my space. Anywhere I go, she should move out of my space. Okay? At this stage of the game, this should be pretty easy to achieve. Them just lunging around you, being able to walk with your bubble, moving, you, moving your bubble the whole time around the round pen. With these horses just moving around you nicely. This teaches them a lot about your space, respect, and everything, which I want. I want, them, I want their trust, their confidence, and their respect. So this really starts getting them soft and supple. I can work on tight spaces like between me and the round pin here with my bubble space here. They should be able to really get you, be able to go between you and that fence. But I, like I said, I should be able to move my space. I'll just keep going from one end of the round pin to the other. Now if you've followed some of the steps, this should be easy to achieve. So watch as I will, if I just want to stop her, I should be able to walk in the hip and she should stop, turn and follow me. Okay. Oh. Okay, this next exercise, I've showed you the steps to get to here. Okay, now I'm gonna put her out on a 30 foot rope. You saw I started her in hand on a real short rope first. The closer they are to us, the more control we have. So I never start putting them out further on a 30 foot rope or anything like that until I have those basic lunging exercises established first, okay? So that's why I now put her on a 30 foot rope because I want, her, I want to be able to do all those exercises out further away from me too. So I'm gonna show you and demonstrate through a 30 foot rope. I can tell you the best thing to do, don't try to keep it cold up in your hand or anything like that, just pits it loose on the ground. But always be aware where your rope is at so it doesn't get tangled in your feet or anything like that. But it's so much easier just to throw it out on the ground and we're just going to work through it, okay? I'm going to cast her out, be able to reel her in. Cast her out, be able to reel her in. So it's better just to have it on the ground, but always be aware where it's at so it doesn't get tangled in your feet or anything like that. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to start her in hand close. I'm going to direct her shoulder and drive her hip. Now, here we go, here's the purpose of having our 30 foot rope. See, it's on the ground, all I'm very aware of where it's at around my feet. You should not be able to get this tangled up in your, in your feet, around your legs, if you're just paying attention. And if we're gonna be around our horses doing anything, we should be paying attention anyway. So this will really work on some coordination where your feet are at. So I don't ever worry about this getting tangled up around my feet. Okay, with this 30 foot rope, I've demonstrated just how soft they should be at the end of the rope at the end of your 30 foot rope. I really want them trotting and doing really well. At this stage, I, I do some loping with them and stuff too, but remember the main thing is, is I want to be able to stop their hip from out there. I want to be able to direct the shoulder and drive their hip. And the whole point is just to show you, like I say, the further they are away from you, the less connection we have with our horses. We have to establish that. So we establish that on a, 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 a short rope,